Hey up YouTube, I'll have to keep this short. Um, I did have about 15 minutes of footage already, but my SD card just went <laughs> Just as Alf was bringing in a schoolie bass. But don't worry, you can see it. I'll insert a picture of it here. Nice little schoolie bass, lovely little silver, silver bar. They are out there, they are feeding, so that's all good news. Uh, there'll be no set up time lapse. This is the intro. We are here back at the bench in Cleethorpes. Um, I want to get these brought in at Worms changed. So I'll roll the credits. We'll have a little time lapse of rebaiting and reshooting. And then I'll talk to you about what I'm fishing with and, uh, and the rigs and, oh, you know, all the bits and bobs. So I'll see you shortly. <laughs> Well, wasn't that a short one? Smallest little bass. Smallest little schoolie bass. There we go. Hey! <laughs> right, let's get it put back. It's been sat on that up for a while, maybe, so we'll get it put back. You go tell your mum and dad that the good worms are here. <laughs> nice little schooly bass. Always a pleasure to see. That was gorgeous colouring as well. And that was on that was on the bottom hook. Although it's <laughs> Yeah, it must have been up bottom up because as well, both hooks are stripped. So I probably missed a double shot on that one to be fair. So while I've got you, in fact, what I'll do is I'll bring the other one, I'll bring the other one in. Shall I bring the other one in? Yeah, they both need rebating. I'll bring the other one in without shutting off the camera. Although that usually means that there's going to be nothing on it. I haven't seen anything on it, so... I can't imagine there being much, if anything. And we'll rebait them both. It doesn't feel like there's... Oh! Just say, it don't feel like there's anything on it, but maybe there is. Gone heavy. Yeah, I just felt some at turn. Just odd on Alf. I'm in front of you, I think. It's heavy. Be a ball of weed. Go where is it? There it is. You're all right. Yeah, I'm in front of me now. It's staying under water, whatever it is. It's, 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 it's a ball of weed. And two strip tucks. Looks like we've got crabbies. It's a ball of weed and two strip tucks. Looks like we're going to have to battle through the crabs. Right. I'll get rebaited and reshot, but we're not blanking. So, always good. Always good. Get that first fish on the bank. It gets the pressure off then, doesn't it? So, I'll flip you guys back onto time lapse. Actually, 
I just want to refilm the bit that I already filmed. Grab a worm. These ain't fucking worms. These are trouser snakes. Well, snakes. Look at that. That's what 30, 30 ish centimeters long. In peak health, full of full of juices. Let's get it kebabbed and on a hook. I'll uh, time lapse this bit, then I'll come back and talk to you again. I just thought we'd have a bit of a chat. I'm going to pour myself a cup of tea and have a, sit, uh, have a sit down and we'll watch these rods together. Oh, can't get into my flask now. There we go. So yeah, the rigs I'm using today is two torque clip downs. So they've both got a clip down rig on them today. Um, I'm pretty much at the moment, well, I am at the moment, just using lugworm. I'll just sprinkle tea all over the beach. On two tool clip downs. And the intention is, oh. On the old bent banana again. Little shaky shaky. The intention is, as we get closer to high water, I'm going to switch the green rod, the pen, over to a larger bait for an hour or two. And, uh, and see if we can target something a bit bigger. I've got a feeling that shaky shaky might have been a bit of weed brushing against the line. There is a little bit of weed out there, not lots, but there is a little bit of weed. I'm thankful, actually, we seem to be getting a bit more movement in water now, which is nice. Um, it might cause the bass to feed. I've just been chatting amongst the other anglers that are down here tonight, picking up a few hints and tips about close range scratching. Which is, uh, a, a, oh no, maybe it wasn't weed. Ooh. No, that's not weed. We'll have you. Oh. Although I can't feel anything on it now. Uh. 
Let's, let's have a look, see. Don't feel like it. Can't feel anything yet. I could have been preemptive for at least the bait I should be able to resend. If there's nothing on it, I don't think there is anything on it. Oh no, maybe there is. I think I saw a little silver flash, it might have been lead. It went lead. I'll reclip it, resend it. The bait's still plenty fresh enough. A little bit of weed on the lead, so it might have been the lead bouncing. The bottom hook does look to have had something have a go at it. But if I keep rebaiting every time we hit something like that, I'll run out of bait before high water. So yeah, well, uh, I'll just reshoot that. It's not going to be able to get it back to where it was, but... That was a little bit further than I meant. Okay. I meant to be keeping this one in close. That, was, that went a lot further than I intended it to do. But we'll let it soak. It's pulling a lot to it right once it's out there, isn't it? I don't think it's under water, I think it's wind just pulling it across. Yeah, yeah once it settles, it's down, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, let's do what I uh, I came, let's do what I turned the camera on to do. We're having a chat and we're watching the waves. I'm pouring myself another cup of tea, actually, I quite enjoyed that one. Actually enjoying a cup of tea that I made, that's, that's a rarity. Normally the missus makes some for me, she's a southerner, she makes a good cup of tea. Don't fall over. It fell over. <laughs> right. So yeah. <sighs> what I wanted to say, something that I recorded earlier. Welcome to, if you're new here, to One Man and His Rod. What you get here is chilled out fishing. It's real fishing, whether I blank, whether I get angry, whether I have a cracking session, whether I have a red letter day like I did last time I was down here on the, at the bench. Oh, that's nice. Um, you know, regardless of what happens, you guys come along with me. It's not a catch report, because it's not. Yes, I do sometimes keep what I catch, so do be aware if you are thinking about subscribing, sometimes you will see well, you won't see me, but I will talk about keeping what I catch. I know some people aren't fans of that, but it's why I'm trying to learn this skill. I have been a sea fisherman for a little over a year and a half now. Um, so I've still got a lot to learn. So one of the aims of me setting up this channel was to build not a community, but to be able to, to review my videos, see how my progress has changed, and get feedback from the community, get feedback from you guys, from the knowledgeable fishermen out there that watch these videos. But also, my other intention is, and always was, to bring new people into the sport. Bring new blood in, new faces, new people. Get other people to enjoy it, you know, learn from my mistakes help support local businesses, all that good stuff. So if you are new here and you've made it this far into the video and you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. It is free. It costs nothing to actually subscribe to a channel on YouTube. You just need to set up an account. Don't worry about YouTube Premium. You don't need none of that. Um, you can just close those ads. They're annoying. We all get them. But 
yeah please do if you're new here and you like the chill out fishing that i do um what i do tend to do is do things like what i call time lapses well that's not what i call it. it's what it is called time lapse whereby the session is sped up and i'll put some some music on underneath it now the music varies it's not always going to be to your taste um it's one of the common complaints i do get when i when i jump from classical music to rock music to dubstep to electronica to drum and bass what you know whatever i choose to put on um sorry i'm just watching danny it looks like he might actually be bringing something uh Something of a notable size in the both just had a couple of little flatties apiece, I think. Uh, I certainly seems to be winding for a while. I'll tell you what, if I were Danny, if I could cast as far as Danny, I'd be knackered after my third cast. My arm would be knackered. Has he got something? No, I don't think he has. Um, yeah, it's not always going to be the same music. It's not always the same old stuff. I do chop and change. You do, you know. If it were up to me, I'd have heavy metal music on all the time. But it's not up to me. You're packing one down. Hey. You're packing one down. No, no, no. Oh, did you crack off? Ah, right. Um, quite often see me come with, with other gentlemen. If you go over my other videos, I bring the kids, I bring other people out with me, I support people where I can. Uh, Alf and I have become friends. He reached out to me um, a while ago asking if I'd take him and show him some marks. And we've fished together pretty much every time since be it on video or not um, yeah it's it's nice actually it's a rarity for me to be able to have a positive outlook on a, on a fishing trip when we've only had one fish although it is nice to have had that one fish early on like I say it does take the pressure off um, to put a video to put a fish in the video because I know from the stats on a blanking video you guys don't like it you click at the offer which is fair enough I get it I get it you don't tune in to see my ugly mug and, and listen to my rants you tune in to see fish on the beach and learn about marks and things like that and see where I'm going wrong <laughs> but yes well the other thing I was going to say actually to the to the regular subscribers there's a possibility or to the subscribers or to the viewers there's a possibility of uh, a slight break in the videos. Um, I've put an offer in on a property, uh, so we're hoping to move house. I'm just trans transferring back to working back in the office again, which has also meant converting from weekly to monthly wage. So money's a bit tight. Um, and obviously, if you're a sea fisherman, you know, whilst it's not an expensive hobby once you set up, um, it's not free. Uh, you know, fuel, fuel combined with bait just means... Uh, here, Alf. Let's watch. It's just effortless, isn't it? Absolutely effortless. Oh. The rod closest to you guys, you know, the little knocks that you see on it. It's got the power, I've put the power tip on it in, in, in preparation of, um, of changing to the big baits, which I'm going to be doing in about half an hour. Um, I'm fishing the big baits for a couple of hours and then I'll switch back. Uh, so it's got the power tip on for that. So the little knocks 
could actually be like a schoolie bass or a flatty. Um, but you do tend to find that over high water, recently actually, I mean it used to be that this mark fished its best over high water, but recently we've been finding when we've been coming that it's actually fishing best um, a couple of hours before high water, a couple, well, two to three hours before it, before, you used to fish it an hour either side, that was the, that was the, that was the peak time. Now, it seems to be a couple of hours before that hour on the flood and a couple of hours, af an hour after high water as well, if that makes any sense at all. Um, so an hour either side of high water seems to be quieter and then earlier than that seems to be, seems to be uh, a little bit more action. Uh, but, you know, times are changing, sea, the sea is changing. Um, you speak to the old boys, to the, to the fishermen that used to do it way back and it's, you know, it's a completely different ball game. Not only are we using obviously different kit, but there's not as many fish out there. The water is, I'm sorry to say, not as in good a condition as it used to be. Um, I mean, if you were lucky enough to get out during lockdown, uh, like I was a couple of times, uh, to my local marks, obviously I wasn't traveling too far, but I was staying within the remit of however it was, however far it was we were allowed to travel. Um, the, the, just in that short space of time, the sea was so very different, so very different. Uh, all the waterways were, obviously the roads were, but all the waterways were so very different. Um, and then as with, you know, the advent of the weather and the, the increased storms that we seem to be getting in the UK now, the banks are changing year on year. The marks are moving, the, 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 the creeks, the channels, the, the, the bits that flood, the, the deeper bits, they're all changing. fish behaviour is changing, the water temperatures are changing, you, you can't purely rest on the laurels of knowledge that you've had for the past 20 years because the fishing you were doing 20 years ago is completely different to the fishing that you're doing today. Like I say, completely ignoring um, rig and equipment changes. couple of little knocks on the green rod, they're only very little. Um, I will leave them until it's bait change time. Um, you can tell that those boys are scratchy, they've got a scratching rig out and a, and a big rig out. Well, a, 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 a close in and a far out because they're, they're, they're targeting the flatties and they're hitting the flatties. I, I did contemplate actually rigging for some, for some flatty bashing tonight, but uh, I didn't, to be honest. I didn't. I've stuck with my bass rigs, the ones that have held true for the last couple of vet sessions now, the, uh, the old uh, two-up clip down. As we head towards smoothie season, it'll be a two-up clip down with slightly bigger hooks and a Wessex rig. Uh, and then as we head into back into winter again, it'll be probably a Wessex and a pulley penal as, as we hope for sort of uh, cod and, 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 the, ba and the, the last of the bass. I don't know how much winter fishing I'm going to be able to going to be doing this year. I'll be honest. Living inland, a little bit more inland, getting the motivation to head out an hour or, or, or so earlier than uh, than I do have to currently is going to be a little bit tricky. But we'll see. We'll see. The benefit of moving a little bit more inland of course is also it puts the other coast um, a lot closer so I will have the option of the east and the west coast so hopefully I'll be able to expand the horizons um, I do want to head to Wales there's some lads I want to fish with down here, uh, over in Wales at some point there's also some lads I want to fish with down south on the Norfolk coast um, hopefully I can do all that this summer but it, it, a lot's going to depend on uh, house moves etc etc so we'll have to wait and see for that but that's uh, one hell of a run about 
my channel and one man and his rod. So I say again, if it sounds like fun, and if you like my chilled out style of doing things, and if you're not already subscribed, please do press that subscribe button. It really, it, it, it means a lot and it really helps out. Um, and if I can reach the 1K and, and I, if I'm able to monetize, then the 20 quid a year I earn from that <laughs> will help because you don't make millions on YouTube, not like you used to. No, the, the reason a lot of the small channels sort of charge or try and get to the 1K subscriber mark um, is purely and simply because you get more support from YouTube. Um, your channel becomes included in backups. Um, you get more, um, well, you just get all around more support, more features become available to you, etc., etc. So, you know, that's, that's why we, we push for the 1K mark. Um, it's not about the monetization because you earn a pittance. Unless you've got 96 million subscribers, you earn an absolute pittance. So don't think, you know, I'm not going to subscribe to so-and-so because I don't want to, 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 to aid in making millions of pounds um, doing a hobby that, you know, it's, it's, trust me, they're not making millions of pounds. Um, anyway, I'm not going to get into that rant because it leads me down a rabbit hole. I'm going to have one more cup of tea, chilled out on my own. So I'm going to put you guys on the, on the, on the rods. Um, you can watch them with me. I'm tempted to bring that green one in. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but I'm going to leave it a little bit longer. Uh, I'm going to have an, a, a chilled out cup of tea, sat on my box. You should be all right, Joe, uh, Alf, if you go straight. I left a little. That would have good one for you, that, that would all right. That would all right for a thump for you, that one. Yeah, um, yeah I'm going to put you back on time lapse. I'm going to have a brew uh, and I'll talk to you in a bit. It's been lovely chatting to you, as always, guys. And I'll, I'll talk to you again in a little while. Hopefully, we'll put another fish on the beach soon. Number two guys, now that is a little dab. You can tell, I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but you can see through a dab. Let me get it back. But that's a really pretty little dab and a lot of people say they make good eating. I don't think, uh, I don't think it's worth it. I'm tempted to put it in this little pool to recover. Now we'll get it back. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Little dabbo. I felt that. That's, that's the first time I've ever had that with a flatty. I was reeling in. There was death. There was nothing on it. And then uh, it was about 20 feet, 20 yards out, and I felt it go bang. There was definitely nothing on it prior to that, and I felt the fish take it. So just bring it in to rebait. It's almost getting to big bait time. There's definitely nothing on this. But I should have rebaited it when I last brought it in, really. In fact, this is feeling very light. It doesn't even feel like there's a lead on it. Oh. 
Oh, but there is, there it is. Two sparkly clean hooks. Sparkly, sparkly clean. Oh, it's dropped cold, doll. Oh, that wind is very cold. Regretting not bringing my coat. The missus said you should take your coat. Says, nah, it'd be all right. Yeah, I'm regretting it now. It's not all right, it's frigging freezing. In fact, the rig that just had the dab on, the top hook is stripped. Obviously, the bottom hook had a little fish on it. So we're definitely contending with the crabs, I think. Uh, which normally actually would indicate that I need to send a bigger bait or a stronger bait. Something that can last against the crab oars. But I'm not feeling it today. I'm not feeling working hard today. A little pleasure session. Cell of what will be, will be. If we hook into a new personal best, happy days, but I'm not going to be upset. It's not a blank. You know, put a couple of fish on the bank, two species, a little dab, a little schooly bass. In fact, the missus, <laughs> the missus said, do I want me caught? And I said, no, I'll be all right. And the kids said, ah. No, the kids didn't say, ah. The kids said, do I want me gloves? And I said, no, nah, I'll be fine. But it has grown bitterly cold down here tonight now. Alf's just brought in his second crab of the evening. The lads to the side of us, they're having great fun flatty bashing. I'd say I haven't rigged for flatty bashing, I've got size one o's on, which I'll be honest, I mean that dab took a one o, but for now, I'm happy doing what I'm doing. We've got a couple of fish on the bank. God almighty, these worms are huge. If you're a coarse fisherman, these worms are like the difference between squats and maggots. Uh, I do want to get out again with Bogue UK before I leave, so Amy and Simon, if you're watching this far into the video, because I know like other the other YouTube guys like uh, Shane and Holden's Codfather, should I say, and Jimmy Codbites, we do support each other by, by trying to sort of spend the time to watch each other's videos, comment and all that good stuff. Um, so Amy and Simon, if you're watching, I do want to get back out with you guys, especially if I end up moving away, I want to get out before you guys with you guys before I move away so try to remember to let me know when and where you're next going out after May the 14th because uh, like I said that's my next trip is May the 14th so please do uh, do try and let me know so I can try and organise some funds to get out with you It won't be it for me on the East Coast. I will still fish the East Coast. Or should I say the Lincolnshire Coast? That's for sure. 
it's where I cut my teeth, I'm not going to leave it behind. But um, this summer is going to be a little trickier than I originally anticipated. Sort my leg legs out. That's popped and not held bottom. I have to get used to using this firm tip again and not putting too much curve in the rod because it will lift the lead itself in slightly adverse conditions. Right, I didn't get that cup of tea, so I'm going to try again. I'll speak to you in a bit. Yeah, dear me, I think even the GoPro is struggling with the cold wind. There we go, another little dabby. They are pretty fish, and to be honest, they do feel like there's a fair bit of meat on them, but... Alf, I'll put it in here for you. Get your hook in here. No, you need to return to the sea before the sea washes away. Putting a little pool behind us, at the side of us. I'll have to keep an eye on, make sure it actually leaves. She's not leaving. Come here. Oh, let's put you back in deeper water. Let's try not to get so wet. There we go. 
<laughs> so there we go what's that number three four i don't know i don't keep a count i only get cheesed off when i don't catch anything <laughs> right uh i'm gonna bring the other one in as well rebate them both <sighs> are you on crab number three and i'm on fish number three Alf just keeps bringing in little shore crabs now on his hooks. Although it is, it's handy to know where they are for smooth down season. Definitely nothing on this one, but then from the looks of it coming through the wave then there was no wet no bait on it anyway yeah stripped off completely so even at the the crabs are at short range and long range it appears to be in front of us so although also in the same breath that was out for quite a while Knowing that there's crabs out there, I shouldn't be leaving baits out there for, for 25, 30 minutes. Oh, there's some sand on the heel on this, and it's doing my boxing. It's really rubbing my heels. The walk back is going to be a painful one. Um, yeah, we were going to switch up to big baits, uh, but we've decided between the two of us that we're actually not going to um, the worm is going to last the session and quite frankly if it doesn't we're not going to lose any sleep over it oh, oh this rig's hanging over the water So we weren't expecting things to be as cold and windy as they are. There was, a, there was wind forecast, uh, but the wind chill has, has taken it right down. But for now, at least, we will persevere. And we will fish on. But if that wind picks up anymore, we might have to call it a day. Oh, that went over top of my boot. Oh. Oh, that blew over quite a way. See how far over I went to cast that. That's blown over here quite a way, that has.
I'm supposed to fit these bloody worms on size one ox. in the soft cough. I'm going to send this. I'm going to have to move the rods around. Because it's blowing a hoolie out there now. Where's that settled? Has that gone? How? How have that? How has that gone over you? You must have gone over before you hit bottom. I guess it's about half the distance. Yeah. Is that three or four on the beach now? I've, I've, I've not been paying attention. As usual, I'll pop you back on the rods. Like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Please, helps me out. I'll see you in a bit.
sure it actually records. I've been doing that a lot recently. There we go. Schoolies are back, guys. Lovely little schoolie. Yeah, little schoolie bass. Lovely little bar of schoolie. Tell you what, they've got some brown on them now, haven't they? Yeah. These schoolies, the, one, the couple that we've had, they've had some colour on them. It's like it's been in kelp beds somewhere, yeah. but I don't know where nearest kelp bed is. But there's definitely some brown and gold in that, isn't there? There we go. Nicely returned. We just need mummy and daddy to come along now. Even the guys sort of next to us, um, Danny and Matt, they, they, I mean, those guys can, can, can really throw, can really, really throw. Um, and, you know, none of us have had anything of any size, but in saying that, you know, we're all just using one. Like I said, we were gonna, we were gonna put some big baits on after, or over high water, but it just went completely dead. The fishing just went completely dead. So Alf came over, I was sat having a cup of tea and Alf came walking over and he says, I don't think I'm going to bother. And I says, and I, my reply to that was, I was just thinking the exact, the exact same thing at the, the exact same time. I don't think I'm going to bother with big baits. I think we'll stay on small baits. Um, and I mean, it's, it's delivered me another little dab. Um, there has been a couple of little knocks on these rods. Uh, I think I think Matt down there's just thrown back another little flatty, but like I would say, I went to go speak with Danny, and they're just here for for crack tonight, so they've just got some leftover worm, a little bit of squid and bluey, and they're just uh, they're just chucking it in surf, which is spot on for this mark. Is you know you can't fault it. It's part of the reason why I do like this mark so much. Is the variety it can deliver, but it is very much actually usually an all or nothing mark so it'll either fish quite well or it'll do nothing uh, depending on you, you and a lot of that depends on your own ability really um, to read the sea to know what to target um, to be able to get the distance out there if if needed because i mean it's plenty deep enough there's plenty of life out there at sea um, there's just not you know, if you can't reach it, you're not going to be able to get it, you know. Uh, if, if you've got your 200, 300 yard casts, you're more than in the realm of catching a, a good sized taupe here. Um, it does attract taupe fishermen, and, uh, and you're talking taupe from the beach. Uh, you know, I'm tempted, I know uh, one of the fellas, Blaine, who you saw in <laughs> a video a couple of weeks back, come over Blaine. <laughs> Um, I think he's he's wanting to have a play with a drone in summertime and fly a drone out. Uh, just a bit of lazy man's fishing. But uh, yeah, we just also I was just discussing with Alf. The colour is starting to drop out of the water. It's it's gone from a milk chocolate to more a. Well, it, it, yeah, it's more of a green. At the moment, so. You know, fingers crossed. Soon we'll be coming down with the with the beach casting gear to put one out and and just just spinning in the in the shallows whilst uh, whilst the baits out there soaking so yeah uh, it is actually time for me to bring in the the pen so we'll bring this one in and we'll change the bait the uh, the yellow one's just had a fresh bait on it because I did get a, a knock on it so I decided to have a look uh, and the top bit was was completely devastated uh, bottom bait seemed to be untouched, so I've just rebaited the top hook on that one. Uh, we'll have a look at this one now. I can't feel anything on it, and I've not seen anything on it. But there's, it's very possible that I'm casting over, or it's been stripped by crabs again. Oh, we're in. I buy in. I mean, uh, my, 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 my hooks are here. 
as in I've reeled him. Not a fish. But I think, to be honest, it's going to be a shorter session today. I don't think we're going to fish too late. Um, just, like I said, really, just for laziness. <laughs> that and, like I said, these worms are that big that there's not many to pound at the moment. I'm not, that is by no means a complaint. They've caught me some, some corking fish. Uh, you know, I've had my me, me personal best bass of just, just, just shy of three pounds at two, was it 2.8, 2.78, something around that region. Um, so, you know, I, by no means am I complaining about the, the, the worms being big. I'm just kind of not rigged for them to be this big. They're, uh, oh yeah, I was never, I thought, what I thought was worm remnants on the bottom hook is actually just seaweed. So I definitely wasn't going to catch anything on this. Fingers look like I've been eating a Ruby Murray with me with me hands. And if you understand what I just said, congratulations, we can be friends. What do we reckon? Is that fish still on there or was it hit in the middle? What I'm gonna do, Russ, I'm gonna uh, sort out me tiny little uh, yeah. Oh, no, it's still on there, isn't it? Yeah. I hope so. Let's have a look. Well, it's heavy. Not, it's not big heavy, but it's heavy. He says, having to bully it a bit. It's a flatty! It's a double shot of flatties! <laughs> That'll be why it was so heavy then. Yeah. It is, isn't it? I think that's a PB flatty for me, that. I'll get the top one off. So the dinner plate size them, aren't they? I'm tempted, I am tempted, because I'm told a lot by a lot of people that I should try one. Especially a big dab. Yeah. Apparently dabs apparently are tastier than... And I was watching some other day... I mean, all you have to do is just cut it. Yeah, you just bake them all, don't you? You just cut belly off and bake them all. Yeah, but I was told, I was watching some the other day, let me just show this one to the camera, I think they're both going to go back to be honest, but um, I, was told, I was watching a cooking programme the other day, yeah. and they were talking about Dover sole and lemon sole, yeah. and I swear the lemon sole they showed were just a big flounder. Yeah. Okay guys, double shot, I mean you've, you've been able to hear all that, a nice size dab with a fair, I'm very tempted, it's got a fair bit of meat on it. I mean, it's a, it's a chunky boy. It's been working out, but I'm not gonna, I don't think that's a dab though, is it?
I don't know if it's bottom one a dab or is it a flounder? Which one is it you can see straight through? It's dab you can see through. Well, that's a flounder then. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That is meaty. Yeah. All right, how far you've taken up all the way down as well. This has got to be, I think, that is a good size, that. my personal best uh, flounder. Come on, let me through. There we go. Put it between. Grab it. And then back out. Oh, I lost it. Back out way it came. That, that's a good size flounder. I'm not keeping it. No. A lot of people do say I should try one, but yeah, yeah. I'm going to wait until the day I get a real, like the, the one that one. Alf had the other, not Alf, that AD had the other day. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a monster one, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, a dab and a flounder. Dab and a flounder. This, this is a good size. I mean, that's easy. 30, 35 centimetres long and a good three centimetres thick. He's a real thick boy. Real thick boy. But it's it's lovely and healthy. Let's get it back. I'll be honest, guys. That one belly flopped a little bit. Thump! <laughs> I tried to put it back nicely. But it belly flopped a little bit. Hey? I did, I did. I'm sorry, I did. It belly flopped ever so slightly. Ugh. Yeah, so we were recording that live. You saw the bites. I could feel it, it was heavy. Saw so top up come up and it's like, oh, it's a flatty. He says, never. Lifts it up a little bit higher. Double shot of flatties. A dab and a flounder. So today, once again, it's another another three species day. A dab, a fl some dabs, some flounders, and some schooly bass. It annoys me he's got a rod set up and he's not sending it out. Doesn't sit right with me, that. Um, so, yeah, I'll get re-baited, re-shot. Three, it's another three species day for me. Oh, I need to buy shares in a bait needle company. <laughs> yeah, I've lost it. It was only a matter of time, I've lost it. Yeah. And I don't know how these, I think these, the one, the other one that I've got, I think is, you're supposed to use the other one for... Yeah. Um, what I do, I normally stick mine, you know, in pockets and throats. That's what I have been doing. That's what I have been doing. But it's it's gone. So the other one I've got is it's not one that's got all in. It's one of these things, and I think oh, that's yeah. for lashing bait on in it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Can I borrow a baiting needle? Because I can't put a worm on without one. I'm not good enough. Where have I put it? I'm sure I put it somewhere safe. It's not in worm, is it? No, it's not in Whitworm. I'm sure I put it somewhere. I'll find it probably. Yeah. Mind you, I don't know which way you. Fucking hell. Drop that in there. I don't think I've dropped it. Yeah. I think I've. I, I'm pretty sure I put it somewhere. Yeah. But I've probably only got another half a dozen casts here. I'll probably find it in my pocket when I get home, when I can feel my fingers. Yeah.
This is a type I like with a little brass grommet on the end of it. But I'm going to order some Trident do a, a carbon fibre one. Gary, I know sometimes you watch my videos. Help a fella out, will you? Let me try out one of your carbon fibre ones. Send me some. You've got me address from my previous orders. <laughs> Sorry, I've been cheeky. I don't know. I don't know what the appeal is on a, on a carbon fibre baiting needle, but I'd just like to give it a go. I like to try new things. Right, I'm not going to put that in my pocket. I'll put it on my box. You what? What? Yeah, I just said to camera. Says it annoys me you've got one ready and you've not put it out. Yeah. Don't sit right with me. No. Well, you have to cast from like in front of me and it'll pull. By the time it's landed, it'll be in front of you. Yeah. It's like I'm walking halfway to Danny to cast. If it were towing other way, he'd be walking to underneath me and casting. Right, this time I'm going to remember to put you on time lapse because we're getting closer towards the back end of the session. I want to use my worms and things up. This is going to soak for four or five minutes, so I'm going to do some, some rapid fire fishing. So I'll put you back on rod tips, or I might move you back so you can see the whole thing. Not decided yet. Uh, and like I said, because I'm not going to get out again, so I don't want to take any bait home. And I think we'll be wrapping up in about half an hour. Um, so. Yeah, I'll put you on time lapse and I'll see you in a bit. I'm going to go see Danny, because if they're staying for a bit, they can have whatever worm I've got left. So, yeah. Talk to you in a bit. Good session. I'm happy today. Like, share, subscribe, please. I'll see you in a bit. Another very large flounder. Unfortunately, it had hooked itself quite badly. So rather than let it go to waste, I think this one's coming home, unfortunately. It's no signs of life. I'm not happy about it. I'm not proud of it. It's, uh... oh no, it's still breathing. No, she's still breathing. She's still breathing, I'm going to get her back. I'm not going to hang about guys, sorry. I just, I want to give it every chance it's got. At least I suppose if it does, if it doesn't make it in the sea, at least it doesn't go to waste. No, swam off. Wow. Shot off. 
literally shot off like a rocket. That's genuinely blown me away, that. I thought that was... Uh, I thought she was done for, that one. I thought that one were done for. Yeah, it shot off like a rocket, that one did. Uh, it has, however, the reason I couldn't get the hook out, somehow, it had bent over inside. It's made a right mess at hook. I mean, obviously, I don't care about the hook. I'm just happy the fish went back. Look, I mean, it's... The hook's now a circle. So, I'm down to one rod. I'm not setting up another rig. No. No, I'll drop down to one. I don't know, shall I? No, I'll drop down to one, guys. I'll drop down to one rod. Um, yeah, I mean, it's about time we were wanting to head home anyway, so we'll drop down to one. And to be honest, it's upset me a little bit as that. I mean, yes, it's gone back. It's shot off like a rocket as soon as it hit the water. But, you know, I am upset about that. Oh, other rods twitching. So yeah, I'm going to pack down one rod, I'll put you back on that rod and I'll, uh, I'll talk to you in a bit, probably probably sort of edging towards the outro. We're losing the light, I'm not geared for, for nighttime fishing. Yeah, I've got a tip light and stuff like that, but I'm not, uh, I'm not properly set up for it tonight. So I'm going to uh, I'll pack down the pen, I'll leave that one out, I'm going to have to wash my hands, it's all sticky. water over this way <laughs> cuckoos it's dead is it dead was it just refused what was that? What was that? Really? Something just went trip. Yeah, probably a trap. Yeah, probably. Trap. Cockle's got meat in it. Huh? Looks like the cockle beds are coming back. Have you grabbed your bait and needle out of the box, yeah? Yeah. Good lad. So yeah, I've lost count now. I've lost count of what, what, my, what my tally is now. But it's been a great session. It's not an outro yet, we're still fishing. But I am packing down one rod, I'll speak to you in a bit. These flatties are coming thick and fast tonight. We've got another double shot brought in. Another pair of flounders. Yeah, flounders. I'll get the other one hooked and show you. Of course, I've got to walk for ages to get them put back now. So walk, I'm running. It shows how much I give a crap about the fish when a fat man like me runs.
yeah, I'll have to watch the video back, but I think that's three double shots in one session. No, and you've been able to keep your ass away. That's that's always a plus. That's always a positive. Alf hadn't had to get his ass out. A bit of a running joke between Alf and I that. Every time he does his hair fishy fishy dance, I seem to catch like mad. And it stays quiet for him. Come on, let go of the hook. There we go. And he hadn't had to do it this time. Another lovely little flounder. There we go. We'll get this one back as well. I mean, if I, if I was a cat person, if I had cats, they'd be having a field day. Oh. But I am not a cat person. Right, I'm calling it, this is going to be my last cast, I'm going to have one more, this is going to be my last, so I'm going to get this baited up and resent, you probably can't see anything now, uh, apart from in time lapse and when I'm up close, so I'll probably end up editing this out. But I'm going to quickly rebate this, then I'm going to pack, pack everything else down. Me. Hook myself. Oh, can I borrow your needles again? Unless something very dramatic happens between yours and my rods, this is going to be my last one. You know, unless some, unless a big shoal of smoothies suddenly turns up. Yeah. Yeah. Or even some turbos. Some turbots. Well, them two said that they've never heard a race coming out on here. No. I'm sure I have, but you know, it could be hearsay, could not it? Hey. <laughs> well, who knows? Never say never, eh? I can't see enough to put this worm on. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we're all right. We're threaded. I'm hoping I'm not running out on my good karma before this match on 13th. That's my only concern, just give this back to Alf before I resend it. Yeah, I even think I'm going to film the outro as well, actually, and get get the camera yeah. packed down so we can just pick up and leave. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where do you want your needle? Because you've just locked the top of your box. Uh, Front pouch.
No, mate. No, all good. I mean, it went a bit further than I wanted, but it's still attached. Right, are you, are you still filming? Yeah, right. Right, guys, that's going to be it from me tonight. I'm going to... Uh, this is the outro. I am done. I, yes, I've still got a rod in the water, but I'm not geared for filming in the dark. I've not rod tips. I've not anything like that, so... You know, I've lost count, but I think I'm on maybe eight, nine flatties and a, and, a, and a bass. I think I've just hit double figures. And to be perfectly honest, I'm optimistic that this last cast will have me another one or two. Um, but like I say, I'm just not geared for, for nighttime filming tonight. I've brought just me, me top light that you can see me with, but you can't see really see the rods with. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to pack down, I'm going to put the camera away. If I get anything of note or anything of measure, I'll put a photo of it in, as I always say I will. And believe me, it's not that I've ever forgotten to do that. It's just usually that I don't catch anything at the end of the night. Um, don't forget to go check out Shane the Holderness Codfather, Jimmy Cod Bites, Bogue UK and Levo's Fishing Adventures. Links to those channels are in the description down below. Please do go check them out um, and show them as much love as you, sh as you show me. Actually, that might be a negative. Go be nice to them. Until next time, guys, stay safe, tight lines, and I'll see you later. <laughs>